In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about doing support bracing within Lychee Slicer. Now this video is kind of a companion video for one that I just shot called Everything You Need to Know About Using Grid Supports Within Lychee Slicer. Now these two videos are not in order. You can watch this one and then go back and watch that one. Or if you've already seen that one, then you've probably been anticipating this video. So with that, let's get going. So in order to get started, first I need an object with supports on it. And for that, I'm just going to use this cube right here. I'm going to go to prepare, make sure supports is highlighted, and I need to add some supports real quick. I'm just going to use the inline supports, which is just where I get to click, hold down uh, shift, and place a bunch of supports. I think these ones are going at four millimeters a piece, so I get a support every four millimeters. Let's go and just put one more row. Let's put this one... Um, almost to the other end right there. There we go. So now that I've got my supports, first let's just show you how to use the tool. Make sure that the object is selected. Go down here to the bottom and select the one you want to choose. I'm just going to choose small object bracing and hit add apply. Now that's going to add bracing to the entire object. And you can see right here, maybe that's not what we want to do. It's a lot of bracing for an object like this. So what I can do is I can just grab a couple of those different support shafts and I can actually change them. Let's say on these ones, I'm going to do strong at the very bottom. Update that one. These are a little bit thicker than the other one. You can see there's a little bit more going on. And then maybe for the center, I'm going to keep it the way it is. And then the next line up, let's move those ones to uh, maybe default bracing. And in the back, let's grab some of those and move those ones to, let's say, tall object bracing. Oops. Grab those ones and change those ones, let's say, to tall object bracing and hit apply. And you can see here, we can actually change how things are going to work. I can even come in here in the center and let's do like the custom one, like my own. And you can see everything's going to change depending on what supports are selected. So I don't know if you know that or not, but you can apply bracings based on selecting the entire object and apply that preset across all the supports or just select individual support shafts and apply that bracing preset only to the one selected. And another tip, if you want to remove all the support bracing, you can do that. Just make sure the object is selected, go over under supports, selection and then go down to select bracing supports click on that and you hit delete or whatever you want to do now of course if you just apply them over each other they're going to delete all of them and then add them back let me show you what i mean real quick so let's say i went from small add them all up and i could easily go from small let's say to tall and it's going to replace all of them every time i run it another little helpful hint for you and let's give you a little bit of asmr while you like and subscribe to this video All right, let's just go back and delete everything so I can start from scratch. Like bracing supports, delete. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm actually gonna create my own custom preset and I'm just gonna click on add new preset and give it a name. I'm just gonna call this for science. So now that I've created my new preset, let's go through all these settings and show you what they do. The first thing here you'll notice is that we have global, top, middle, and bottom, these different tabs. And you'll notice that they're mostly all grayed out. And that's because right here under pattern type, this is where you choose whether or not you're going to change the different pattern for all the different sections. Since right now the pattern type is just to, to do the same across the board, there's no reason to edit the other settings so they're grayed out. Now if I come over here and I say simple diagonal, you can see they're still grayed out, but everything changed. Let me show you what this looks like. So simple diagonal versus double. With the simple, it's kind of like this cool little grid pattern. And with double, I now have a double grid pattern, which is, you know, cool, right? All right. Uh, let's just go back one more thing. Let's place one more thing of supports just a little bit closer. We're going to go back to, and we're going to delete that guy. Place one right in the middle and right there. All right, so these ones are a little bit closer. Now we have three rows. Let's go back for science. Edit. Oh, make sure I have them all selected. All right, for science, edit. Okay, now on the double, because they're closer, we can see that we've actually started going in between them. They're not just bracing on a single uh, axis, they're now doing it on two axis. So something to keep in mind as well. If I go back to uh, simple, we're gonna see here that we still have uh, much, much less, but we're still getting that double axis because they're so close to each other. And of course, if I do a mix, now you're gonna see the top, middle, and bottom are uh, available. But to keep this simple for now, I'm gonna move this back to simple. And even to keep it even more simple, I'm gonna go back and actually delete two of these rows so we can really see what's going on here really easily. Now here under global, the gap is going to actually put a gap in between every single row of bracings. So you can see here if it's zero or eight, there's now a gap in between every single one, at this point, eight millimeters long. Let's bring that back down. 
Now bottom start, this one's unique. You'll only find the setting under global. This is actually where it's going to raise the supports away from the bottom. And I can set that up to like 16 or you know all the way up to 30. Now for me, I don't think any support uh, shaft under 10 millimeters needs bracing. So I'm gonna set my bottom start at 10 millimeters. That way from the bottom going up, that first 10 millimeters is clean and a little easier for the printer to deal with. All right, and diameter. Now the diameter is actually this, the thickness of the support bracing itself. You can make it super thin or basically you know non-existent, uh, super, super thin or really, really fat. I don't know. Uh, for me, I probably, I like keeping mine um, under one millimeter. So let's say 0.7. But of course it depends on the type of resin you're using. You're using like a wax resin or something very soft. Um, you might want to make them a little bit bigger. If you're using like a really strong resin that's really hard to get support bracings off, you might even want to make them a little bit thinner. In fact, you may even create your presets based on this setting alone, or you can just come in here and edit it on the fly. It's, it's up to you. Now, first and second reinforcement, we're going to skip that for now. I'll get back to that in a second. That's, it's, that's a pretty cool one, so stick around for that one. Now the next one is where things can get a little bit interesting under grid bracing reinforcement. Now this is where we can actually force things to get a little crazy. For that one, I'm gonna need back my second row. So let's hit cancel. Let's add back in my second row here. And just for fun, let's add back in my third row. So to make this easier to understand, let's go through and add in the start gap. Let's put back in that 10 millimeters. Let's add in a gap between each one of these, let's just say two millimeters. It's going to make it nice visually pleasing. And let's go over here to our grid bracing reinforcement. We can see right here that we've kind of got this bunch of boxes. Now if I come over here and I change this to simple, I now have um, kind of more like a, an X shape between every single one where I've got this cool diamond pattern. And if I go to double, we're going to start making a double diamond essentially between these things. And now we have really, really strong supports. Now these things right here don't make a lot of sense if your support bracings are this close together, or sorry, if your support shafts are this close together. If you start spreading these out a little bit more, it starts to make more sense. Let me kind of show you how that works. Let's go over here, let's highlight everything. We're gonna go over to our structure and we're gonna go from five to 10. So it's gonna double the distance between each of these uh, over here. We're gonna go back to my support bracings. I probably should have saved that because now, oh no, it did save. So now you can see here, um, We've got our box right here, and maybe you're afraid that's not enough. This is where I can come in and do simple or double even, and now I've got uh, where they make connection in between them. This starts to make a little bit more sense now with those being further apart. So it's really kind of up to you on how you want to do that. Just know that there's a lot of power here in how you want to balance between how much bracings you have or how many support shafts that you have. So now under global, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from simple to mix. And what you're gonna see here is that these unlock. Now what this means is now I can change them independently. Now there's some cool features that we get from this one, but first I wanna notate that this grid bracing reinforcement, you'll see it on all four of these tabs. And it's actually the same. If you change it on one, it overrides the other three to give you an idea. If I change this to simple right here, you'll see it's now set to simple on all of them. If I set it back to uh, double, they're gonna be set to double. And the non-grid step, if I change this one, it won't do any, you can't see it doing anything right now because what non-grid step means, it's the way it's gonna affect any support shaft that's not snapped to a grid. All of these are snapped to a grid. Again, I'll show that to you in a little bit, but that's why it's not doing anything. Just know that those are locked between all four tabs. Now there's a little extra feature that we get when we unlock all four tabs, and that's this repetition and the gap works a little bit different because you saw here we had gap here, and this gap changes it between every, ding, every single bracing, there's gonna be a gap above and below. The way this gap works is different. And let me show you what I mean. So let's set the repetition here to two. So what that means is now there's gonna be two rows of bottom supports. Of course, we could change that up to three if we wanted to, or four, you know, whatever we wanna do. But for now, let's leave that at two. And of course, we can change whether the one is simple or double. I like it to be double on the bottom, a little bit of structure to help it grow, and then let the medium, the kind of the middle take over from there. And so now what this gap is going to do is it's going to be the gap between the first row, second row, and where the middle starts. So right here on gap, we can actually have a different gap here. So this one's four, this one's five. If I click on global, it's probably gonna reset them both. It's, it's set to five, but we can have four independently here. If we change this one, it's gonna override all the other three. So if you plan on doing this one, just don't mess with the gap under global because it will just overwrite the other ones. All right, now we're gonna to go to middle and we can do the same thing on middle. We can do double or we can do simple. I'm gonna keep it as simple and I can even change the gap here independently. 
um, I can make it zero if I wanted to and make the middle more structural and more together than either the bottom. I'm gonna add in like a one millimeter gap here just to kind of spread it out a little bit. And then top. Same thing, we can set a top here. And of course this top is the gap between each of the rows. So if let's say I turn this down, I have one row. And this is kind of small here, it's hard to see, it's right up here closer to the item. If I do a second row or a third row, you're gonna see it's gonna start eating into the middle. And of course I can get rid of the gap and really stick them close together, which is probably what I would do on this one, maybe like a very small gap, like a 0.5 or one, I guess you can only go in increments of one millimeter at a time, just to space them out a little bit. But this, what this gives me is a nice structure where at the very beginning I kind of had stronger bracing just to make sure everything is going to be like structurally sound from the base. During the center I'm a little bit less worried about it because there's a lot of travel to go through. I don't want to consume a ton of resin. But right as I get towards the, the edge here where the end where it really matters, I really want to make sure that these support tips are fully formed and structural. I'm going to dense it back up again. Uh, and of course you can change the amount of density you want. These ones right here we're doing like a double on the bottom. If I go back down here and do a simple so I'm not having quite so much. And same thing on the top, I can go maybe from a double back to a simple and just use a little bit less, but still getting a little bit stronger, a little bit more bracing than I am uh, throughout the rest of it. So it's kind of up to you on how you want to do it. Uh, remember, you can go back here and you can change the diameter down if you want, you know, bigger or thicker across the board. But that's how all those settings work together. As promised, now let me explain first and second reinforcement. Let me tell you what they do first and then I'll show you. So the first reinforcement and second reinforcement, what they essentially do is if you've got a support pillar that's all by its lonesome somewhere, it's going to create an one next to it. The first reinforcement is going to be where you have one support shaft and it's going to create one. The second reinforcement is where you're gonna have lonely support shaft and it's gonna create two. So there's what you need. I'll give an example, what you need is, let's say one support shaft right here. And if I set this, let's say this one, set it to a thousand and I click on apply, it's going to create one on every single one of these because I have what I need plus one. And if I come down here and set the second one to 10, now this is going to apply to every single support shaft that I have selected. So we're gonna hit save and apply. And now you see every single one of them has two attached to it. It's what we need plus one plus two, so a total of three. Now there's something kind of important about this. What this means is that it's only going to add a first and a second if there isn't one already there. Let me show you what I mean by that real quick. So I've gone through and I've created these every five millimeters. So we're gonna make sure I select them all and we're going to run the for science again. What we're gonna see here is the only times where we added support bracing is at the very beginning and at the very end. And the reason why we didn't add you know, that triangle on every single one is because they had one close enough to attach to. So this one right here, an example, had the one in front of it and the one behind it. And this one had the one in front of it from the one behind it. So it's just saying, make sure that you've got three attached to or two to attach to. And the reason why we got them here on the ends is because the ends, well, they didn't. This guy only had this one to attach to and it didn't have one behind it. So it created another one because it needs three. So, and since we had the, you know, the, the bottom one set pretty low, it did the same thing. Uh, there wasn't enough to attach to, so it created a couple extra just to make sure that every support shaft had two additional to connect to. So that's how that function works within Lychee Slicer. Now, as finally, as promised, the last thing is the non-grid step. Now, again, this only applies to support shafts that aren't snapped to a grid, and since I recommend you pretty much use the grid supports whenever you can, this one shouldn't come into play too often, but if it does, it's a little bit weird, so it's hard to explain. Again, I just kind of have to show you on this one. So in this example, I have a bunch of supports that are not snapped to a grid. At the front, they're very, very close together, probably closer than what you would want them to be. As it goes towards the back, they become more and more uh, further apart. So now, right now, the non-grid step is set to two millimeters, and as this goes up, what it's gonna say is that basically, it's going to increase the distance, it's gonna allow a bracing to jump. So before, the, the maximum it would allow any bracing to jump was two millimeters. As you can see here, this gap right here is less than two millimeters, less than two millimeters, less than two millimeters, less than two millimeters. And at the course of the front, it's less than two. As we go, like I said, we go towards the back, we get more and more up to six millimeters in the back, I believe. So as we continue to rise this up, we're gonna see that we're gonna start snapping to more and more of those from three to four to five, uh, and then eventually to up to, all the way up, where now those are able to cross more and more distance to attach to more and more support shafts. This can get a little bit messy, as you can see, but of course, this is if I apply it to literally everything. I can hit cancel and I can just grab, let's say, a couple of these like this, and then I can run it. And we'll see what that looks like 
if I'm just doing it on a couple. So you see here, it's quite a bit less and I can even take this down and only allow it to a snap to a couple of them. This is where you can still have some of the control over or how you want this bracing to work on only a couple supports that are not snapped to the grid. This is where you're gonna do that one by controlling which ones you select and the distance at which they can grab. Of course, from here, you can also even change these You know, from a simple, non-diagonal, whatever you wanna do. But again, a reminder that both of the settings under grid bracing reinforcement are global against all four tabs. So if you change it one, it's gonna change it across the board. All right, and I think that about covers it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and that you learned something from it. If you could, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out a lot. Or if you know anyone who's struggling learning Lychee Slicer, make sure to share these videos as well. If you have any questions, comment down below or reach out to us on the Lychee Slicer Discord. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.